Um, David Miller, thank you very much for joining me and for agreeing to talk to me. Um, obviously, you've had so much going on in the last few months, the, the Barclays and now this uh, amazing photographic book that's coming out. Um, first of all, I'd love to just talk to you about the Barclays. I mean, about the, the process of obviously, well, you can't tell me, but how you got there, but, but you got there and obviously the experience of witnessing history and and being one of the people who um essentially records that history through your photographs um tell me what it was like to be there yeah it was a surreal moment i mean i was always planning to go to this year's barclay on the back of last year's i'm a lot more prepared um and with a goal in mind this year um and that being creating the coffee table photo book that was regardless of what happened. So if we had no finishes, the idea was still to go there and capture the Barclay and the surrounding area, just to give people a really first, like a first person perspective on what's going on. Okay. Um, a lot of the images you see in that at the Barclay, uh, they're the same every year, because obviously you're only allowed to go to like a couple of locations. But for me, when I went last year, I seen lots in the surrounding towns on the road leading to Frozen Head. Um, and I thought it would be really cool to just make this photo book, which is everything Barclay. Mm -hmm. And I guess with what's happened this year, it's made it all extra special. But yeah. not for one second did I come away thinking I would witness that, let alone five finishes, but no. let alone witness Jasmine finishing. Is, is Laz as legendary as he comes across? Definitely. I'd say he's like quite commanding, really. He... He, he commands a great deal of respect because obviously it's it's his race. Um, he's uh, he's in the process of leaving it in good hands, but it's it, that campsite's sort of closed off, and it's like you're part of the Barclay family. It doesn't matter whether you're crew or a runner or part of the media; you're very much involved. So you know to see finishers come in or to see runners being tapped out, it's it's all really special. Oh, amazing. Um... Yeah, so I mean, I mean, I know it's, you can't you can't tell me very much because of you know it's all wrapped in secrecy and in, into how people get there. But yeah, I mean, presumably when you sort of plan on going, you must have some form of idea of when it is just for booking your plane ticket and you know how long are you going to be out there for and and what sure. kit you need to take. Yeah, I think it's slightly different from the runners to media, but the media does have its own entry process. And it's one of those, I watched the documentary like the rest of you guys years ago, um, the original film, The Race That Eats Its Young. Yeah, Love that film when it came out. And then obviously, you know, Where Dreams Go To Die with Gary Robbins. I think that's probably the best Barclay film out there. But when I started photography and then shot UTMB the first time, the Barclay was the event I had to go to because I felt like that matched my style the most. Yeah. I thought if I could go to the Barclay, I could capture it like like the best I could. It, it, it would just suit my style. So basically I'd done my homework. I didn't really ask anyone, believe it or not. I'd done my homework, found out how to get in as media um, and then just jumped through about nine to ten different hoops, <laughs> including getting a visa in that last year. But this year was very much easy because I because I've already gone out. It was just the same application process, but without jumping through many hoops. Okay. So you you get given a date at the latter part of the year, and the Barclays always in March. So that gives you yeah a quarter of a year just to prepare for it. Um, because again, logistically, it's quite hard to get to. Um, it's it's a random place in America, Frozen Head State Park. It's you have to fly to Knoxville. Um, and then obviously make your way to Frozen Head. So the best thing to do is, you know, if you're going to go from the UK, jump on two flights to Knoxville and just hire a car. Right. Gosh. Do you, I mean, do you team up with people or do you just arrive and see who's there? Yeah, just just basically arrive on my own. And then when you're in the campsite, because it's quite small, you know, you catch up with faces from the year before and it's just, yeah, it's just like, it's just like a, like an annual thing. But I think if I was ever to team up with anyone, it would take the emphasis away of what I wanted to do. 
again this year I had a very sort of clear vision what I was going to do at the Barclay and again that was just to capture the race in the surrounding areas with a with a specific camera okay just just one specific camera then or yeah I mean I've always been known to be a minimalist when I take photos I don't have several lenses I've got a very sort of mid-range DSLR but I felt like I pushed that camera to its limit particularly after UTMB last year there was lots of night photographs I couldn't take just because my camera couldn't handle it Mm. so rather than going out getting all these different lens upgrades and a better camera and what I had I wanted to go down a very different road and that was by a very different camera to do a different task and this Leica Q2 monochrome is very much just a black and white camera it's very powerful but what you have to do is almost invade people's personal space you have to get up and close but to me that gives a great photojournalistic approach and um it yeah it just gives you like an effect yeah but leading up to the Barclay I had quite a lot of practice with it one being at the the Winter Downs 200 the Centurion yeah then the arc of attrition then I went to the tunnel ultra in Bath to actually shoot in the dark to see (laughs) you know what it was capable of so to be honest with you by the time I got to the Barclay in March I felt very ready and I felt ice cold you know to capture whatever whatever I wanted to um I was I felt very sharp more so sharp than I am now because I haven't really done a lot since just because there's been a lot of um a lot of background stuff going on but yeah I would say looking at the Barclay work six and a half thousand photos it was I felt like I was at the top of my game for sure oh brilliant um gosh well how on earth do you edit those how do you how do you pick well this this is this is where you're going to be quite surprised um so coming from that camera I won't edit any I mean the only thing I might do is bring down the exposure to make them slightly lighter but other than that there's no cropping no editing whatsoever no photoshop and that's one promise I'll I'll have with this book coming out is all the photos will be pure from the camera very much a first person perspective and when the viewer opens the book it's very much like you're going to be there and I think the more edited they are or the more words there are you lose that effect and it was always going to be like a visual journey. Mm. I think that's I think that's such a great point I mean nowadays we're so used to editing and filters and and you know you look on Instagram and and you think well I can guarantee that's not the original photograph that that person took a photo of. Um, So it's, it's nice to to know there's a real honesty behind those photos as well. Definitely. I mean, you know, if you want to use my Barclay work this year as an example, the ones in black and white, obviously they're all black and white because it was a black and white camera, but every single one of them is straight off the camera, including the ones at night and the cover of the book, the gate shot, I'll be honest, it took me about 20 minutes to get that shot. I had my head torch shining it on the gate when there was no one behind. Mm. And it just took several shots to get that. But it's not edited at all. And I think it it makes it look more beautiful that way. And it mm. makes it more pure. And again, that was the idea for the book, really, was just to make it real. So oh, you're actually yeah. there. Fantastic. So um, you have reached the full funding now, haven't you? Uh, yes. But I think there's a, another couple of days. Um, I mean, as as it stands, well, we're we're talking on um, what is it Tuesday the eleventh. Um, by the time this comes out, I think there'll be another couple of days still, won't there? Yeah, I mean, Vertebrate backed me for the book, and they offered to look after the Kickstarter because I think for me it would have been overwhelmingly hard to even even think about doing a book and going down the factory roads and the shipping but because they're experts in that field they offered to look after that for me so all I've got to do really is give them full creative control and select the photos but basically they ran the kickstarter yet there's three to four days left now Mm -hmm. it's hit the target but the important thing is with this kickstarter all the books uh, like they're pre-orders only so once the Kickstarter ends, those books which are on there, you won't ever be able to get again. Um, they're hardback and they're, they're going to be printed on like real premium quality paper. Mm-hmm. And where my photos are unedited from the camera, they'll go straight onto print. And yeah, they won't be touched. They'll, they should look, you know, quite spectacular. I'm really excited to see it. 
so am I. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm feeling very smug then. So, but I mean, w will it be published in a more normal way later on for people to purchase? I believe so, but not in the version on the Kickstarter. So the Kickstarter is obviously the normal hardback. Um, there's a hardback where you can get your name printed inside the book, which is signed by myself. There's a version with a special slip case, mm -hmm. which I think Vertebrate are going to do something quite cool with that. And then there's a version which is going to be signed by Jasmine as well, because mm -hmm. um, obviously some of the proceeds are going to the Green Runners. We thought it would go full circle. Yeah. But the plan is with Vertebrate, I think if it goes well and people receive the book well, maybe next year we might do a softback edition just to go into the actual shops. Okay. And it'll be like a much cheaper edition. But yeah. again, the, the actual goal is to make a coffee table photo book, yes. which most, most of them are hardback. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I, I really can't wait for mine. I mean, do, do you know how long it's going to be before they're actually produced? yeah i think they've given me like a end of july deadline to select 200 photos which is going to be really hard i know one of them obviously the one of jasmine that's going to be at the end so she yeah. can sign it but other than that I've, I've got like a rough idea but it's going to take a while just to make it as perfect as i can and obviously i'm involved with the the creative direction and the layout as well so mm -hmm. i'll work with vertebrate to make sure it's the way i sort of envisioned it yeah. but end of july i think october release ready for christmas that's that's what they're looking at okay oh wow okay so we're going to be kept on tender hooks for a bit longer yeah definitely i mean it will be worth it in the end but i think if you've got an ultra runner in your life and you know they're obsessed with the barclay like the rest of us it's yeah. it's going to be unique just because obviously there's a few barclay books out there at the minute um there's a few like fiction with like a first person perspective obviously Alexi Berg's done an amazing finishes book right. um which document obviously documents all the finishes but this one like you say is very much like this is Barclay 2024 this is what happened this is a visual journey and for me you know it sounds really biased I think this probably is going to be the most important Barclay of all time because it can't be repeated no I'm, it can't you know we, we all thought the Gary Robbins year that that can't be beat what happened was just ridiculous but obviously this year seeing Jasmine come in with you know a minute and a half to finish it was um yeah beyond belief and there yeah. won't ever be another there won't ever be a first female finisher again so I no. think that's this year was special and they're I mean he's bound to make it different or harder or something next year um no more five finishes surely <laughs> Yeah, I think the conditions were really good this year as well. But again, it was a super stacked field. I mean, Damien Hall come really close to finishing. He's got to be, yeah. you know, he's got to be looking at finishing number 21 based on going on lap five, two years running. So yeah. hopefully he goes back next year and hopefully they don't make it too hard for him. Yeah. But looking at the Barclay reputation, I think, you know, they're going to have to make it seriously hard and just have a few years of no finishes again will you go back it's a really good question um part of me thinks no I think I've gone there I feel like I've caught the holy grail unintentionally and do I want to go back and disappoint myself you know part of me would like to go back and see no finishes mm. because that would be quite cool but I think if I went back I'm not sure it'd be the same and I'm not quite sure what else I could come up with there's new things I'd like to experience and potential new races and new ideas but I think because this book's going to immortalize 2024 like the Barclay I don't know whether to just draw a line under it I'll, yeah. I'll decide later on in the year yeah no I think yeah I think you've got a good point there actually you've almost you can't better it so um... I'll be honest with you I don't think I'm ever going to better that moment in my yeah short photography career I'm not quite sure i'm ever going to capture anything like that again no. no well i mean that you know you 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 bring that up and i was going to you know ask you i mean you you have had a meteoric rise uh as a professional photographer i think you started taking photos during lockdown that's um, right yeah i mean are you a particularly driven person to have got where you are now in four short <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. I think I've always had a passion for trail running and ultra running. 
um, and during lockdown, when I started playing around with the camera, taking photos of my mates doing triathlons, I figured I was getting, you know, fairly good sort of quite quickly. And I think that creativity gave me like a real buzz. And I guess when I went to UTMB in 2021 um, and managed to blag a pass sort of between us, I, I just I, I just blagged a pass and sort of caught, you know, snapped Courtney DeWalt were coming in. I felt like at the time I got quite a lucky shot. I wasn't sure if I could ever replicate anything like that. Um, and that gave me an idea to keep going just to see how far I could take this. But I guess over time, I was just getting better with the camera. I'm quite sort of particular what I put out there. But again, I'm I'm quite grounded. Sometimes I feel like, yeah, I was just lucky, you know, at UTMB with Matthew Blanchard and then Jasmine. I guess sometimes it's just being in the, the right place you know at the right time but I guess sometimes we do make our own luck you do you put yourself in the right place at the right time as well it's it's taking those opportunities yes will you go back to UTMB I mean is that going to be a sort of an annual thing for you do you think yeah I'm supposed to be going back this year I mean what I was going to do was sort out these book photos and then look to later this year but again I wanted to go to western states this year there was a lot of stuff I wanted to do which can't quite happen now um, but I think if I make a slight comeback, it would be UTMB and then I can think, grow from there. But I think if I went to UTMB, I would want to try something different because I've gone three years running and more or less done the same thing, but probably delivered a better product each year. I would like to follow one run around this year and give a first person perspective on that runner and their journey going around the mountain. Yeah, yeah, that's a um, great idea. Although I've been appro I've been approached. Right. But again, I just need to I need to cross the T's and dot the I's and just sort of see see whether it happens. And get ultra fit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that as well. I need to work on my fitness again. Yeah. <laughs> yes, because I don't imagine following a, a presumably an elite runner is is going to be that easy. There'll be lots of hopping out, running crazily, and then hopping back in a car again or something. I think with UTMB, it would be impossible for me to do it solo based on how busy Chamonix and the surrounding areas are during the race. Yeah. You know, it's 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 absolute carnage to be honest with you. And I think it very much you you'd need a hire car and you'd need a driver to jump out because again yeah. these elites are traveling so fast around that mountain. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a that would be a challenge just in terms of logistics, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I know the right spots to go to around the mountain now, but it yeah, lo logistically it's tough with the with the traffic and the amount of people there. But I think UTMB is really special. I know it's a bit of a swear word within the ultra running community at the minute. I'm sat on the wall with what's going on with the takeover of other events. I think it's it's good and bad. You know, mm. they could work with race directors and the community better. But actually, when you're in Chamonix every year and you see the world championships and you see the backdrop and the world's best runners all coming together to celebrate the sport we love, that's really special. Um, and that's yes. something you need to praise the organisers for. Because I think if UTMB was gone, I think we'd all be like, bring back UTMB. We would need someone else. Mm. Um, it, they could hold it, you know, they could hold it somewhere else for sure, but it won't be Chamonix. No. No, I mean they have they they've made something very unique there. Um, I think like you, I'm I'm on the fence. I I think I'm more amused by the. Um, I don't know if you saw my 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 personal post at, at the time in January was I I did a, a photo of a pot of marmite, <laughs> but instead of marmite, I put UTMB, and it's like yeah. people either love it or hate it, and it's uh it, yeah. it's it's just sort of interesting to see the it's a very passionate subject isn't it yeah they, they know they can do better and I feel like they are trying to rebuild their bridges but at the end of the day they're they're a business and businesses are cutthroat they all take each other out but I just yeah. think yeah they one or two wrong moves to send shockwave through the community you know picking on the wrong people well I mean I still think there's there's space for everyone so yes yeah, I agree with you yeah and, you know, certainly from a business perspective, I'd love to go to UTMB one year. <laughs> um, it, yeah. it must be it must be an amazing. But then there's, you know, there's also others. I mean, the World Trail Majors that, you know, that that's, you know, an exciting new prospect as well, which, you know, I'd love to I'd love to see that growing. 
Um, but yeah, so yeah, so that's the, so we, yeah, it's your, your book is really the sort of the major the thing for the rest of the year and 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 UTMB hopefully. Are you running yourself? Um, I'm running with my mates just casually, just to keep fit. But no ultras or anything planned. Um, I suffered a bad ankle injury a couple of years ago, and I've never quite been the same. Um, but it has allowed me to concentrate more on photography. But again, to be honest with you, over the last few years or four years since lockdown, yeah, I've worked very, very hard. And sometimes it's nice just to sort of sit back and look at what you've done and almost create the best product you've done. I feel like this Barclay book is a celebration of what I've done and sort of where I've got to. And again, because of the stakes and what happened at Barclay, it all sort of fell together. Um, But I'm not going to go rush in to shoot any events anytime soon, I don't think. I just need to sit back, again, reflect. um, And when I get back out there, it's just find the love and maybe try something slightly new. Okay. Oh, well, thank you very much for talking to me. Uh, I wish you the best uh, and I hope everything turns out well for you. And I can't wait to see this book uh, at the end of the year. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. Thanks.